let's talk with you, Mark Cohen. Thank you again, all of you, for being here. Let's talk about the marketplace, what's happening there, and how what's happening there impacts advisors and institutions. Well, first, Tim, thanks for having us back here at LPL Live. It's great to be back yet again. I remember back to 2019 when we were back together know, in person right? for the first time since then. Um, but yeah, in the marketplace, there's a lot of things that are changing, and we're seeing some really interesting occurrences for the first time, probably in the history of this, of this industry. Two particular phenomena coming together and colliding that is driving a lot of activity in this marketplace. The first is something we've talked about for probably about 10 years, um, and the buzzword of succession planning has been around forever. Well, we've known for a while we were driving towards a cliff. That cliff is getting pretty close. We're seeing for the first time now, last year, more than 50% of all client assets in the country that are managed are managed by an advisor over 55 years old. More than that, we're seeing, and Cerulli's telling us, about a third of all advisors, the 300,000 advisors in the industry, about a third of them, 100,000 advisors managing $8.5 trillion in assets are likely to retire before this decade is out. Clearly, there's a need for us to be able to help and understand how are we going to transition the management of that wealth. Only 25% of those advisors who are planning to retire know what they're going to do. So you've got $6 trillion, 75,000 advisors who need some help to figure it out. The other side of it is there's no secret. Every day you look in the media and there's two, three, four new M&A announcements coming about. And so you start to ask the question of why. And the reality is over the last several years, financial backers, private equity firms have started to really take a really keen interest in what we're doing in this marketplace. If you think about their business model, they're looking for a few things. They're looking for some predictability. They're looking for some growth. And this marketplace really provides that. As we've shifted over the last, I don't know, 20 years or so from brokerage to advisory, you've really built up a recurring revenue stream where you wake up on January 1st, you've got a good amount of predictability as to what your revenue is going to be for that year. You add on top of that the fact that most advisory fees are then tied to and are correlated to the marketplace. And you look at the last 100 years, the market has grown 8 to 9% pretty consistently. Now, yes, <laughs> we're in a weird environment today. But if you look on average over that period, 8 to 9% growth. So that means that the private equity firms are able to benefit from that as well. They can't see that anywhere else. You don't see that in subscription revenue, in, in tech, or anywhere else. So wealth management's really interesting for them. <laughs> But my question, with all of that that's happening, how do advisors navigate that and then still remain competitive? It's a great question. And the reality is you need help. And as we heard about from the main stage earlier with Dan, we've got a robust amount of services to be able to help with that. In fact, Carter leads a team for us that is specifically focused on consulting through your options around succession planning and understanding the marketplace around M&A, representing buyers, representing sellers, and understanding and pursuing the opportunities that are available to them. We've made a meaningful investment into that this year, quadrupling the size of that team since the beginning of this year to be able to make sure that we have the staff and the resources and expertise to help you guys out where it's necessary. Okay, so then let's talk about, let's talk about the team, let's talk about the services. All right. What is LPL doing to help advisors take advantage of what I hear is amazing opportunity? Yeah, absolutely, Sam, and just what Mark was highlighting, when we look at the opportunity out there with all these transitioning advisors, all these assets in motion, we don't want to show up and say, hey, advisor, go wear another hat. Go figure out how to be an M&A expert. Go figure out how to write your own succession plan. Go figure out how to market your practice. We want to help step up with the solutions, the services, and the professional support to go help them achieve their goals. Whether you're a, an independent advisor, whether you're part of an institution, whatever you're doing, we want to help you achieve your goals. And we want to show up with that right support at the right time. So that means, as Mark said, as we grew the team, standing up specific buy-side support teams. So you're ready to grow? Great, we have professional support that can help you do that. And services to help you find those right advisors. Maybe you're on the selling side, planning your legacy. Well, we have succession planning here to help you plan it, and then a seller support team if you want to monetize it. So it's all about bringing the right services and solutions to help our advisors right when they need it the most. Okay, so give us a few details about what are the benefits that advisors will feel from taking advantage of the services and the opportunities that you have to offer. Absolutely, and we work with quite a number of advisors. It's almost a thousand advisors a year now that we support through M&A and succession services. And so a couple examples. So we had an advisor up in the Great Lakes area, was running a thriving business, had no intention of stopping, um, but then he suffered a health issue last year. And he said, you know what? I want to step back from the business. Um, and he had a partner um, that he thought he was going to be succeeding to. Uh, but when it came time to actually execute that plan, they found that they really weren't matched well. They weren't the right partner. So he came to us and said, hey, I need to sell my business, but I need to find the right partner. That's important to me. 
And so our sell side team took him through a process to understand his business, understand what was important to him, and then to go find a buyer that had those same values and that same philosophy. Uh, and we're excited to say that he sold his business successfully just a few weeks ago. Um, so that was a great outcome for him. And that's on the legacy side. When we think about the growth side, um, another practice that comes to mind, um, a great uh, team in the tri-state area, they're looking to grow through acquisition. They built a really great model, a lot of support, and they're ready to scale. They just needed to find the opportunities. So they worked with our buyer support team, and we were able to help them grow by over 250 million in AUM just in the last year. And they have a lot more opportunities on the horizon. Um, but we're not just stopping there with the traditional M&A support. Um, so we're looking at, hey, what are other opportunities that we see in the marketplace? And so some that we've seen is, hey, when we have an internal team that wants to maintain their legacy, but they're also looking to offload a lot of the administrative burden of running a business and monetize their practice at a market competitive rate, that was really challenging to do. You typically had to completely sell your business. Um, so we rolled out things like liquidity and succession solutions to help advisors do that, uh, just like our friend Mark here. Yeah, so Mark, let's talk about that. You are an LPL employee advisor. First of all, I'd like to understand exactly what that means and what was that transition like and, and what have the benefits been that yeah, you've transitioned? That's a it, lot of questions, it, I know, but. It is, and first of all, what a crowd here, huh? I know, you're, amazing. You're live here in Denver and what a crowd. It's so nice to be back with everybody. You know, I joined LPL in 1991 when I was 24 years old. Now, I didn't join just as a new, I joined my father's practice who had been doing this for 20 years already. And, um, and it was really, really fascinating to grow and learn the business and see how things have changed, see how it's evolved. But in 2007, dad decided to retire at 65 years old and transition the business to me to own it. At the time, we had $150 million under management. Now, fast forward 15 years from now, we now have $600 million under management. But what's most interesting is the fact that we have the same number of employees. We had six employees in 2007 and six employees here we are in 2022. And so you made the mention of me becoming an LPL employee. One of the things that I learned is that I had a choice over all of these years as we grew our business. I could try to hire people to handle a lot of the different functionalities of my business or I could keep the money in my pocket and try to do it myself. And selfishly, I think that's what I did. <laughs> and the business grew and grew to the point where there was so much stuff that was weighing down on me on the weekends at nights of having to run my business. I was still serving my clients, but I was having to run my business. And so I w talked to LPL and they gave me the opportunity where I no longer have to worry about my P&L. I don't have to worry about payroll or registrations or licensings or marketing or the lease on my car or my, uh, not on my car, on my, <laughs> on my, um, on my building, um, the lease on the copier, on the postage machine, all of that stuff. I don't have to worry about it anymore. And it's made my life so much easier so that I can be more efficient and serve my clients better. And Sam, if I could pull that through yeah. just a little bit more, I think there's, there's really two different things that I just heard from Mark. The first is an opportunity for certain advisors who are so consumed with the operation of running their business, we can help them quiet that noise and really get back to their clients. He's not having to worry about pet benefits and managing real estate and how does all that work anymore. The second is lowering the risk profile of the business. He doesn't have to worry about the risk of that business. He doesn't have to worry about who am I going to transition this to anymore because in LPL coming in as a buyer, we've taken that responsibility from him.